welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm chuckling away to myself. I've just opened this puzzle, which Mark has sent me to do uh, for the video today. It's called Nadir by Barrels, and this is apparently all of the information we get in the grid. Three thermometers. I had a quick look at the rules. There's something called a Nadir cell, uh, which sounds like another sort of thermometer to me, but this is plain, plain lunacy is what we're going to be dealing with clearly. We have featured Barrels on the channel before. I thought Barrels was a fan of death metal. Um, I may be misremembering Barrels. Apologies if so. But yeah, this, this looks weird and wonderful. I'll read you the rules in just a second. A couple of things to mention first. Um, we released yesterday this puzzle, um, which is a uh, which is an incredible wordle themed Sudoku. If you haven't had a go at that, do have a look at it. It's verging on genuinely approachable. And um, yeah, it's an extremely elegant way of sort of representing wordle in numbers. And it's by Woofer ZFG. I've been, I said his name wrong yesterday. I was trying to say it as Woofers and that really didn't work. Yeah, but anyway, that's yesterday's video. Do check that one out if you've not seen it yet. Um, now, what else did I want to mention? We got a request actually um, on Twitter, didn't we? That was to have a look at a cryptic crossword clue. Um, I think this came from Chris Halls or Chris Hallers. Apologies if I've get, got your name wrong, Chris. Um, but basically, um, yeah, this, this clue here, 11 across, uh, stay here and be late most unexpectedly 5-5. Five, five. Apparently this has been garnering some sort of um, uh, response on Twitter for its, its excellence and I can see why. It is a beautiful clue. It's from Vlad in The Guardian um, here in the UK and uh, if you have a look at it, see if you can solve it. I'll explain now so if you don't want a spoiler you might want to click ahead 20 seconds or so in the video. So the key to solving this is to think about what unexpectedly might be doing. And remember that cryptic crossword clues can often include anagrams. Now, a knowledge bomb, five plus five equals 10. And if you look under here, look, be late most, that is 10 letters. So what we need to do is to anagram be late most and come up with something that either means stay here or means stay here and be late most unexpectedly. And I can see exactly why people are admiring this clue. Uh, this is a reference to Alfred Hitchcock and the film Psycho, where the Bates Motel was somewhere you may not have wanted to stay because of what Norman Bates might do to you in a shower. Um, so if you stayed there, you might become late, and that's late as in dead. You might refer to, you know, the late great, I don't know, who, who, who's, who's late and great who I want to refer to that's not going to get me into trouble. I don't even dare n name anybody nowadays. But anyway, it's anybody, somebody who's late is, is dead. So stay here and be late most unexpectedly. Uh, the answer is Bates Motel. So yeah, that is, that is a very nice clue. So well done to Vlad and thanks to Chris for sending us that one. Um, anything else to mention? No, just to alert you that if you do like your cryptic crossword content, there is Mark's solve of the most recent Times Club monthly special now available for you guys over on Patreon. That is an absolute beast of a cryptic crossword. And Mark, um, Mark, I, I think I can say this without fear of contradiction, is I think just about the only person on the planet who can attempt that puzzle without a dictionary and regularly solve it. So um, yeah, if, if any of you do like your cryptic crosswords, have a look at that. The other thing we've got on Patreon, of course, is my solve of Philomeno Aquarium by none other than Fistimafel. That is a rather long video, um, but I make no excuses for that. It's one of the best puzzles I have ever solved in my life. And if you have a couple of hours to spare, any time really, not just this weekend, try and find time to have a go at this because you will not regret it. It is, an, it is a masterpiece. Now, all that said and done, let's have a look at Nadir by Barrels and I will read you these strange rules. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So far, so normal. So if you're not familiar with therm thermometers, the way this works is this digit here, let's make it a three. As we go along the thermometer, we must rise as mercury would rise in terms of our digits. So this digit has to be higher than three. It doesn't have to be four, it could be five, that could be seven, and that could be nine or eight. That would be a perfectly legitimate way to fill a thermo. But there is one more facet to this puzzle. One cell in the grid is the nadir. 
cells must increase in value as they move away from the, the nadir. Why can't I say that? As they away, move away from the, the nadir in every straight line direction, i.e. vertically, horizontally and diagonally, until they reach the edge of the grid. So, I think what this means is there is effectively, there is a cell in the puzzle that operates as a sort of master thermo. Let's imagine this cell was the nadir. That would be saying that um, in this direction we must increase as we get towards the edge of the grid. In this direction we need to increase from this digit. Let's put the 1 into this square, I think. Does the nadir always need to be a 1? Or maybe that's solving, I shouldn't tell you that, but I think it does. Um, because obviously, yeah, there must be a 1 in any row or column of a Sudoku. And if this is the nadir and it's not the 1, then you cannot increase towards the edge of the grid. That will not work. Yeah, so we're we're not, I think, letting in anyone on any secrets by saying that the nadir must be the digit one. So this would have to increase this way to the east, this way to the west, this way to the south. And there are sort of radials coming out of this as well. So we have to increase diagonally, 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 diagonally. So in all eight directions, we have thermos emanating from the, the nadir, which needs to be treated as a bulb. That's very interesting indeed. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my, my inclination is that we just have to find the, the nadir somehow, because these thermos, they're relatively long, but they're not long enough to be interesting. They're six cell thermos which means that every digit on them has four options. I think this, that can be four, can't it? Four, five, six, seven, yes. So this square can be up as high as four. In other words, it's a one, two, three, or four option. Same here. Uh, if it's higher than four, we'd have a problem because if this was five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this digit would have to be a double digit number and that will break the Sudoku. So, what we can say is, yeah, well, I think all we can say is we've got to find the nadir somehow. And how are we going to do that? Presumably, we've got to use the fact that we've got these thermos in the grid. Yeah, okay, well, there are some cells I can see cannot be the nadir. So you can't have a nadir in the top left-hand corner anymore. Because if that's the nadir, as we go along this row, we've got to increase from this, this nadir. So we'll go two, three, four, and then this thermo is utterly broken because it's the wrong way round. We've got the four, we should be going up to a five or a six or something higher. We can't go down to a three. So we can never have the nadir anywhere that's going to impinge upon this thermo's ability to increase, which means that you can't have the nadir. You can't even have it there, can you? No, you can't even have it here, because if it's here, that square has to be higher. And yet from a thermo perspective, it should be the lowest digit. Yeah, okay. So none of those cells I'm going to allege are the nadir, and that means we're gonna color them in with a, a stop sign. You cannot have the nadir on a red cell. In fact, the red is rather good because it shows the thermos very clearly. Now, can we do the same? We must be able to do the same in column one. So again, if the nadir is down there, we're increasing in this direction and yet we're supposed to be increasing in the other direction. So this is not the nadir and neither is any cell up to here in the column. Um, Okay, and now it's probably going to get harder. What else can we conclude is not the Nadir? Okay, what about cells like those? None of those can be the Nadir, can they? And the reason I say that is that the Nadir will be the one, but that means in the row, we have to increase all the way to the end. That means the other end of the row will be a nine, and you can't put a nine on a thermo unless it's in the end digit. So I think we can also rule out nadirs from these cells and presumably 
the equivalent cells down at the bottom of the grid. No, I was getting that wrong. This one's fine, because if there's a one here, there will be a nine here in the right place on the thermo. So it's those, these ones that can turn red. Um, and my gut reaction here is that this logic must be extendable to cells like this. And the reason I'm saying that is that if this is the nadir, surely then this square has a minimum value of 8. But from a thermo perspective, if this was an 8, we'd have a problem here again. We'd have, oh, whoopsie. We'd have to go 8, 9, 10. So again, I think anything that forces an 8 onto a thermo in a position where the 8 can't live on the thermo is a problem. So that's that fills all of those squares. Now again, we're going to have a problem. So there's sort of pyramids. This is really beautiful, actually. It's a lovely idea. Now these can't be nadirs because then that's going to force seven into one of those cells at a minimum. I mean, obviously the thermo could could go to a nine here, but that's equally broken. So I think those turn red. Six will be a problem here, so they must turn red. And I'm going to say that this is a problem because that would put a five here, and that's correct, and it doesn't work. Now, we can repeat that logic, presumably, for this thermo. We're going to get a, a triangle built up here. So those would force eights into the wrong place. These would force his sevens into the wrong place, sixes into the wrong place. And that cell's already been ruled out by something. Um, but at least we've got sort of half the grid readied now, which is presumably a useful thing. OK. Um, what do we do next? Can we use... I'm wondering whether I can use the diagonal constraint because if I'm too far away on this diagonal from this digit, uh, what if I'm, that might be... If I'm here, if that's the Nadir, then two, three, four, five. That's the, the lowest digit I could have in this position from the Nadir would be a five and that would break the bulb. So that means any cell on this diagonal, those three digits are all impossible because of this bulb. And we can do the same down here. So is it this one? One, two, no, hang on. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Oh, OK. We get one more digit from that, which is a bit disappointing. Um, now, what, other, what else can we do? Can we do something with the little thermo? We Oh. Good grief, Simon. Of course you can. This, yes, this square can't be the Nadir. So sorry. So sorry. Brain, turn yourself on. How could this be the Nadir vis-a-vis -vis this thermo? It can't be. Because if that's the Nadir, again, you're going to have to do something like that. And this thermo is now the wrong way round. So this square is not the Nadir either. Now, no, I was about to say I'm doing quite well. I'm not at all. I've still got vast real estate in this puzzle that could be the Nadir still. Um, but it occurs to me that I've got to be careful. I must have to be careful on this diagonal as well. Yes, if the nadir is here, for example, I've got to increase in this direction and that's going to break the thermo again. This thermo is now backwards. So we can get rid of anything on this diagonal that's pointing at the bulb and presumably anything on this diagonal you know, this cell is doing exactly the same thing. If that's a one, you've got to go two, three, four, and you're breaking the thermo just in two different places. So now if that, no, and even this cell itself is a problem, isn't it? Because that would still break the thermo. If we go one, two, that's just as broken as the other versions. So everything on this diagonal can be ruled out from being the Nadir. Now, oh, are we going, are we really getting somewhere? What a, Yes, <laughs> it's so weird the way my brain works. It doesn't work, frankly, because why can't I? Why can I see the diagonals as a constraint and not see these as a constraint? These are all impossible because, again, any nadir along here is going to break the thermo, isn't it? It makes the thermo go backwards. Well, so far, I have to say this is a really, really cool puzzle.
Although I do feel I'm making a bit of a meal of working out where the Nadirs are, or the Nadir is. Um, now, what next? Can we... I don't actually know where to look now. I feel like I've really done some due diligence on... That cell's fine, isn't it? Because that cell is not close enough. It, it's, it's close enough to the bulb that if that was the nadir, you could go one, two, three, and that's fine. You can put three here. Uh, oh, for goodness sake. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know you're all chuckling to yourselves. I know why you're laughing at me. But having concluded that the thermo can't go backwards on that little domino, I should really be able to conclude that all of those cells are ruled out as well, shouldn't I? For exactly the same reason with this domino. Just didn't spot it. It's weird. This is playing tricks with me. Um, I've almost ruled out the whole of the middle box, which I'm actually really surprised by, because if you'd asked me to sort of gamble on where the Nadir was going to be, I would have gone in the I would have actually gone with a central cell. Um, so can that be the Nadir? So if this is the Nadir, one, two, three, four, five, six, only just six, seven, eight, nine would make a sort of long dog-legged thermo going backwards like that, which would have the digits one to nine on it. Oh no, okay, but that doesn't work for this thermo, does it? One, two, three. You can't put three at the end of a four cell thermo because you'll go two, one, zero. That won't work. And there's no way to put a higher digit in here to give myself any flexibility. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's forced. So that square there is red. Now, Maybe maybe the trick is that the one of these bulbs is the Nadir. That would actually be quite a natural idea, wouldn't it? So if this is the Nadir, what's that doing? That would be a one. This would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, right. No, hang on. There's something here I've not considered at all, which I should have done. Oh, bother. Right. Okay. I've been focusing on the Nadir being a one. But what I've not been focusing on is the importance of the two that must be next to the one. Well, certainly... Yeah, this is huge. Oh, good grief. Right. Okay. Let's imagine this square was the nadir. It can't be. And that's because in a vertical direction, we now need to put two in this column. But the two can never be, can never not be next to the one, because every time it's not next to the one, you've got to put a digit in here that's between one and two, and no such digit exists. So the two must be in one of those squares. But that means in the row, the two can't be here, and that's broken for exactly the same reason. If you put two here, you can't, there's nothing to fill the gap. So you can't put two. Well, you can't. Does that, does that mean you just can't put one ever on the perimeter? Is it the same here? No, that's, oh no, it's not. Right, it's not the same here, because if the one was here as the Nadir, that would be a two, and then you can hide the two in row nine there. Wow. Okay, this is this is getting subtle. This is very very interesting. So now that square is not the Nadir, but that one can be. So any ah, so that one can't be symmetrical logic. That's exactly that's in exactly the same position in its box as this one. Um, and you can see you're going to have exactly the same problem with the twos. So that is ruled out. That is ruled out. This is the same as this, I think. So I'm not sure I can rule it out of that one. Can the corner be the Nadir? 
Surely the twos are a problem. No, of course, the twos are a problem. You can't put the nadir in the corner, although you might want to if it's being naughty, because those two squares now both have to be twos from the point of view of their row and column. The two in this row must be next to the one, and the two in the column must be next to the one. Otherwise, there's a terminal problem with the nature of the nadir. So that's not possible. So that's not possible. So we've got these two which are sort of their symmetrical counterparts, which are possible. We've got, how many have we got left? To, we've, got, we've got 10 possible nadirs that we've got to get through. Um, but I'm now thinking that what I need to do to focus on this is to think about twos. So if I put a one there, where do I? No, that doesn't work. That just doesn't work. In fact, this cell is even more broken than the perimeter cell. That cannot be the nadir, because if it is, where do you put the two in the column? Well, the answer is in one of those two cells by force. Where do you put the two in the row? Well, the answer is in one of these two cells by force. And that means you simultaneously have to have a two in one of those two cells and one of those two cells, which definitely breaks the rules of Sudoku. So you can never put the nadir ever in the middle of a box. So that gets rid of two more cells. Um, hang on, is that... That looks like it's too far away from that diagonal. One, let me check this. One, two, three, four, five, six. That doesn't work. If that's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's just totally, total nonsense. Have we got any more instances of that? Two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that works. Um, are these are these in the right position? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that works. And then that's going to go eight, nine in those two cells. So that works. I haven't put my phone on silent. That is always a shank. Let me just do that. Sorry. Um, okay, so what do we do next? We're here. Can this be a one? Let's have a think about it. We may have to just eliminate these one by one. Um, now, is there a reason this can't be a 1? If this is a 1, this is a 9. This is a 2, 3. That's a 2, 3, therefore, in the row. Oh, I see. Ah. Five, six. Ah, no, it works. You rotten thing. I was just going to say that th this is going to give me a problem on the diagonal leading out of the one, but it doesn't. If this is a one, it's quite interesting because that has to be a two, that has to be a three, just to make this column work. Now, in this direction, now we've got to put the two and the three in the row and they can't go here. And yet they obviously have to be adjacent to each other and close to the one. So they've got to be two, three like that. Now, I thought these two squares might break because all of a sudden these two squares, which have to be higher than one because this is a thermo ascending towards the edge of the grid, have a minimum value of four, five, let's keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, and it just works, which is very annoying. Although that square then has, ah, no, that's, okay, this is broken, but it's hard to see why. This square now is impossible because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, all looking at this square. So this square is at least a seven and it's too far away from its edge to be a seven. It needs to be a six or lower. So this is impossible. And by analogy, I'm going to claim, therefore, that not only can this not be the nadir, but I don't think this can be the nadir either, because that seems to me to be subject to the same logic. Let's check that. If this is a one, that's two, three in the row. You can't put two, three here. You've got to put it here. On this diagonal, You've now got to go four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you've got to go four, five. That means that's a six. This square's got no option again. It's got to be at least seven, and it's too far away from the edge of the grid to be seven. So it can't be seven. So this square is a red square. Now, let's look at this square then. Let's see if we can work out if this is the nadir. 
I'm now worried, though, that we've actually ruled out all nadirs. Uh, or I, what I mean is I've ruled out the correct nadir. And I'm going to uh, now disprove all of this and totally ruin the puzzle. Now, if this is a 1, that's got to be a 4. I can see that straight away because this square cannot be higher than 4 or that square would be at least 10. So you've got to go 2, 3 like that. Yeah, and this is, well, that's creating an enormous thermo, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, we've just got to increase to the to the maximum. And I'm now interested in this diagonal because, oh, this is so clever. This is just lovely. Now, what's this digit? It's got to be a 6 or more, and yet that means that there's got to be a digit that exists in this puzzle that lies between 6 and 7, which there isn't. So that's another one chalked off. That's not the Nadir. This one, is this the Nadir? If that's a 1... Oh, oh no, I was about to say, don't we have the 2's problem? But we don't have the 2's problem. We know there's... Oh, in fact, we know where the 2 is. There must be a 2 in the column next to the 1, and it can't be at the end of a thermo, so that's a 2. Now the 2 in this direction has to be there, because it can't be here anymore. Now this... Oh, so then it goes 3, 4, and we get the thermo again, which is going... Oh, hang on. Now this square has no possible... <laughs> this is beautiful. This is just beautiful. <laughs> this square's got no values anymore. Exact, it's similar logic to with this square. It just applies at an earlier point. Because the 2 is forced here, you get the 3 and the 4, you get the 5 and the 6, and now this square sees 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, yet it needs to be a, dis it needs to be a 2, 3, 4, or 5, so it's impossible. Um, so, so far we are getting to a point where everything's getting ruled out. So is this the Nadir? What's our betting? I'm going to guess... Oh, well, I'm going to say no because I've noticed this one now is symmetrical with this one. So unless it's something to do with the thermo, which I thought I'd, have, I thought I'd used all the thermo logic, but if, it, if this one can be ruled out without recourse to thermo, then this can be ruled out by the same logic, which will be quite interesting. So let's see if we can do this. So if that's a one, Again, the 2 in the row is now forced, because there must be a 2 next to the 1 vertically, so this can't be a 2, so that's a 2. Um, oh, okay. Is that broken for some reason? Oh, it is. No, but it, it's, it is broken. Oh, this is... Br no, right, okay, hats off, barrels. That's just really clever. That's just really clever. It is broken, and it's broken in a way that will break this one as well. But it's broken using the thermos, but using this thermo and this thermo differently, or the same, but by reference to the different nadirs. So if this is the nadir, the point, I think, is that this square now has to be at least a 3. It can't be a 2 anymore. And once this square's at least a 3... That square's at least a 6. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, broken. And that work logic, I think, is going to work the same way the other way around. Let's see. I'm going to check. Um, but that's my gut instinct, is that... Oh, see. <laughs> Let's give it its proper yellowness. So now we do the same logic. So this is a 1. Where does the 2 go? Can't go here. Has to go here. This now has to be at least a three on this diagonal, which means this square here is at least a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine broken. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same. So now we have, I think, zeroed in that the nadir is here. It's taken me half an hour to do it, but is this really the nadir, or have we made a ricket? So, why is this one? In fact, yeah, if I'd thought about it, this isn't that different from those two positions. It's in the middle of its edge. So it must not suffer from the same fate. Where do, okay, where does 2 go in the relation to this? Well, in the column, it's got to be in one of those cells. So in the row, it's not here, and it must be next to it on the left-hand side. Oh, oh, sorry, light, right, but look at the column. This square cannot be a 9. 
Yes, so the 9 must be here. Otherwise, if we put the 9 in the middle of the run, we're going to have a big problem in terms of ascending after the 9. That's going to have to be 10, 11, and then that'll be absolutely broken. So the 9 goes at the bottom. The 2, 3, 4, the whole thing ascends to an 8. That's a 9. Ah, oh, this is real. So then that once you get the Nadir, it's massively powerful, which is which makes sense given we've only got three digits in the grid. Do we need to get rid of our red highlighting? I don't want to, to be honest. I think it, I think it looks dramatic. Um, so now this digit look is at least a three. So this four, five, no, we're not going to run into trouble here. Look, three, this digit on the thermo could be as high as a seven. So that digit can be as high as a five. So this is three, four, five, this is four, five, six, and this is five, six, seven. All of those seem to be possible. So this is six, seven, eight, and that's seven, eight, nine. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not great, is it? So we need to place three in this row. And the three must either be next to the two or next to the one. And both seem possible. Ah! Um, or maybe it's this direction. Oh yeah, actually it might be this direction because that's, that's, that's longer before we reach the edge of the grid. That's at least a three. That square then can't be four or five. So that, ah, this is it, right. Look at this direction. So this digit here cannot be four or five and it cannot be greater than six. Because if it's greater than six, you'll go, imagine it's seven, eight, nine, and that square's going to be too high. So that's six, that's seven, that's eight, that's nine. This is quite beautiful as an idea. Barrels take a bow already. Now where does nine go in row eight? And the nine must be as far away from the one as possible. So it's got to be an extreme cell and it can't be at the end anymore. So that's got to be nine. That's not nine. So that's not eight and that's not seven. So that's not, yeah, that's not six and that's not five. So all of a sudden, this, this is lovely as well. This nine has removed one degree of freedom from this sort of weird thermo that's going in up there and down there. Uh, oh, and, and this six is also removing an option from there. So that's a seven, that's an eight. Oh, yeah, and now we ask where eight goes in row eight now, because it can't go next to nine anymore. So it must be an absolutely extreme digit. Eight, eight, where does eight go in box three? It can't go on this thermo, or that will be nine, 10 again. So that's impossible. So eight goes here. Eight can't be early on this thermo, so eight's in one of two positions in box box one. Um, okay, do we know that this is a three, or could that be something higher than three? It's got to be less than six. Uh, three, four, or five, maybe. Um, Seven. I've got to put seven into row eight. So seven is either there or there. Um, right, I see. Okay, but we can think of this row a bit like a thermo. Like I can't have, I can't put a, a high digit early on in this run of digits, or I'm going to break the thermo that exists between this bulb and this end point. So what's the, this could be a three, four, five, six, there's hardly any degrees of freedom here. So that, this square here, five, if that's five, six, seven, eight, it's broken. Yeah, this has got to be three or four. That's got to be four or five. That's got to be five or six. And that's got to be six or seven. Although, is that right? No, that is right. That is, that's forced, I think. So it's a three, four, five. Right. So there's a three, four, five triple in box eight and six can be placed. Look, so that's a six. Six is in a domino in box seven here. 
six is in one of two places in um, in this box and nine is it yeah maybe we've got to do some sudoku I, you know how I like to resist doing sudoku in sudoku puzzles but I am now thinking we might have to do some sevens here these two squares are therefore seven a seven eight pair oh we can get them so eight goes here seven goes here so seven goes here beautiful so sevens no okay i don't know if we can do more with sevens oh yes hang on look at where seven goes in box three i don't think it can go in the bulb because that would go eight nine ten again so seven is exactly in one cell which is interesting so that's seven yeah this is so gorgeous right now i'm going to ask where six goes in the top row because six cannot go there because there aren't two digits between six and eight so six has got to be here i think because it's in one of those two positions yes it's ruled out of this cell by our pencil marks so six goes in here that's not six five goes in here four and three on the thermo that exists along that direction four is now in one of two places in box six three is not done um okay so we got this thermo but it doesn't seem to have done us a whole world of good does it what can we do with this we shall do we have to use this thermo or oh this can't be this can't be four anymore can it because this is a five at least so four three the maximum value of this square is two so this is a one or a two there's only one degree of freedom along here there must be a two in this domino therefore so there must be a two in this domino look yes and where does nine go that's a two nine pair by sudoku four <laughs> there's a four in the box let's use that that's a three that's a two that's a one good grief man um okay so now we can ask where one goes in the first row of the grid it now because it can't go here it must go here because we can't put a one partially along a ther thermometer same with two where does two go two's got to go here so these three digits now are from three four and five and that one can't be a four because of the four in its column. So there's a three, four, five triple in column five now. That seems like it might be worth knowing about. There's an eight in one of two places in box five. This, this cell on the thermo, this four cell thermo, now the bulb can't be a one or a two. So that's got to be how high can that be if that's five six seven hang on we can't put eight on the thermo either so how high can that be five you can't you can't put five here i don't think because that's going to mean you although can you put nine here oh in fact what do you put there Maybe that's a, that's a better question to ask. Because this digit here at the end of the thermo doesn't seem to be able to be three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Well, it's definitely not one or two. So it must be nine. Okay, there's a nine at the end of the thermo, which gives us a nine there. So this digit, which could be a four apparently, if it's not a four it could be a six so six or four or three. Oh, it can't be three because then in fact it can't be four because if it's four we must have to put a one or a two in one of those squares and we can put neither in so that is a six and therefore that's a four we've got to keep coming down the thermo so in theory this is three four or five and it can't be three because we can't put a lower digit in here so this is four or five and this is three or four yeah, that feels like it works, doesn't it? Although, 
hasn't actually resolved very much. Those three digits I've just noticed are one, six, and eight, and that's a one, and that's a nine, and that's a two, and that's a six, and that's an eight. Yeah, okay. If we actually did Sudoku in, in the order in which Sudoku was probably meant to be done, we'd do better. So this column, or I'd do better. Ah, okay. So where does one go? Well, no, where does two go in this column? It seems to only have one position, which is there. So two, one, one goes here. We've still got to put a two into, into box two, which can only go here. So this squares a three, four, or five. There's a three, four, five triple in row three. So those squares are seven and eight. I've just seen I could have got that before as well if I'd done it in that order. The eight tells us the order of the eight and the seven. These squares are threes, fours, and fives. The four here tells us exactly what goes where. Well, ah, I meant to say three, four, or five here. This is now three or five. Um, so this, what do we need along here? Three, five, and six. Okay, what about those two squares? Two and three? No. Um, oh, this column needs a five, let's put it in. This column needs a four, we can put that in. So those squares are one, six, and seven, and that's not seven, and that's not one, and that's not six. A one, six, seven here, three, five here. But this is a thermo, let's not forget that. So that square can't be five, that square can't be three. So this is three or four. Um, that square can't be, th oh look, this square can't be a three because of the three we got here. So there's a four or five pair in the column, which means that's a three, which doesn't seem to do anything, but um, maybe it does in some way, I can't see. I've got a six, seven pair here. Oh, okay, yes, and that's from, that's from the fact that we were able to sort of pencil mark this thermometer, weren't we? So that's forcing this to be a five and this to be a four. And that disambiguates the three at the top, the five here, the four here, the five here. It's beautiful. And that's a four, that's a three. This is a five, six pair. This is a three, five pair. And surely we're on our way to solving this now, unless I've made a ricket. Ones, fives, and nines into those squares. So let's see if we can do any restricting. That's not nine, that's not one. And that seems, to, oh, that's not five actually, because there's a five beneath it. So this column needs ones, threes, and, ah, ones, threes, and nines. So where, the, the clever question is, where does three go in this column? It's got to go at the bottom. So this is one or nine only. And, um, maybe the bottom row, ones, twos, and sevens. So these squares, that's got to be two or seven. And that's got to be one or two. Ah, it's a three here, that's a three, that's a two. That's a seven, that's a six, that's a six, that's a five, that's a nine, that's a one, that's a nine, that's a five, good grief. That was better. Uh, seven gives us one, six, seven, two. Okay, and now we need a one in one of those squares and a four, and we have finished it. Very clever indeed, Barrels. That is a really weird and wonderful puzzle. Um, I wonder, actually, now I'm, I'm just, I'm going to probably go away and play with this uh, after I've turned off the video. I'm wondering if there's a way that you can more elegantly demonstrate where the, where the, the, uh, where the nadir is because I had to do it a bit piecemeal. I sort of used the thermos a bit and and tried to hone in on, on where it was. But I think that I didn't appreciate the value of the two and the one nearly early enough. I think if you appreciate that, you can probably disambiguate that this has to be the nadir really quickly. If anyone works out how to do that, I'd love to know in a comment um, because yeah, it would be a shame to miss that logic if it exists, um, but loved it, frankly. I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.